Okay everybody, well the technique that I'm going to show you in this video can come in handy for many many things, right? Let's say a compressor air hose or part of a sci-fi suit or anything like that, right? So jump in, check it out, have some fun. Here we go. This video has been made possible by RenderHub.com the premier site for selling and buying your 3D related content such as 3D models, HDRI files, sound effects, textures, print ready models and much much more. Okay everybody, well in front of you is a collection of curly wires. Now I didn't even know they were called that but it kind of makes sense and I'm not even sure they're called that but this is what shows up in the Google results, right? Okay, so I got a request to do a tutorial on this. You can use it as a phone cable. You can use it as, I don't know, uh, maybe an airline on a compressor. You can use it for all sorts of things, right? Now that said, let's jump into Maya. Right, here we are. So we're gonna start off with the Helix. That's probably not a big surprise. So we're gonna go up to our modeling menu. We're gonna go to create, polygon primitives. Let's go and find Helix and there it is. And this is what by default shows up. Now, we're going to need to tweak that, obviously, so I'm going to hit Control A to open up the Attribute Editor. Let's go in here and let's start by changing the height to begin with. Um, maybe something like this. And, of course, we need more coils because otherwise it won't look good, right? So we're going to increase the number of coils. And I think that looks all right. Okay. We are going to decrease the radius. Let's try 0.2 which makes it nice and round like that. And then we might want to add a little bit of subdivision here. So let's do 10 instead of eight. All right, there we go. Now, so we have this and you could say, yeah, cool, we're done. But the thing is, this is not our end result. What we want is to look at nice and curly, right? So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna create a path for this. We're gonna jump to our top view. I'm gonna go up to create. We're gonna go to curve tool, CV curve tool. And let's just, uh, you know, do a simple S shape. Maybe something like this. And what you don't want to do is do crazy sharp turns. So maybe something like that, right? Okay. Now, the thing is, what we want to do is we want to attach that thing to that path. So how do you do that? Well, you select your curve or your, uh, yeah, your helix. You shift select your path. Then you go up to your animation menu, right? You jump over to constrain and you go to motion path, attach to motion path and hit the option box. Okay. Now, a couple of things you want to change here. If it's not uh, set correctly, uh, this is in, this is going to go on time slider. Uh, we're going to leave that alone. Uh, the front axis is going to be on Y. The up axis is going to be on X, right? So we're going to leave that and we're just going to click on apply. Now, that puts our helix flat on the floor on top of our curve, and we're still not there yet. Now, keep in mind, with a path like this, what you're basically doing is you're creating an animation. And it's going to run over this path up to where that little number says 120. And that 120 corresponds with 120 frames down here in the animation slider. So technically, if I jump back to frame 1 and I hit play, let's see what happens. You see that our object is following that flow, which is kind of cool, right? Okay, we're gonna stop that. We're gonna jump back to frame one because although it's following that, it's not following that as a um, cable with curves. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna select this guy. We're gonna shift select our curve again, right? And we're gonna go back into the animation, back to constraint. And we're gonna go to, uh, where do you go? Motion path, flow path object. Now, as we do that, you'll see that it will change straight up, right? Okay, so it's changed. We're gonna go back to frame one. We're gonna play again, and let's see if that's gonna play out. And what you're seeing here is that, you know, the curves are a bit too tight for our object, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna change the flow of the curve, right? So if we select this guy, we're gonna right click and we're gonna go to control or vertex. And here you've got a whole bunch of points that we can play with, right? So I'm going to select this point right here. But as I do so, I'm going to hit B on my keyboard. 
and I'm going to pull that out. So basically, the impacted area will be much bigger when I move this, as you can see here, right? So I'm just going to start to kind of manipulate that shape into a flow that I'm okay with, right? Maybe something like this, and then there you go. And you know, you have to kind of make up your mind what you want there, but. And then if you don't want that area to be too uh, impacted, what you do is you hold that B key again and do something like that. You get the idea, right? Okay. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go back. We're gonna hit that play again and see how that turns out. Okay. Now let's say that this is the position that I want. Okay. So I'm happy with that curve. I think it looks cool and that's what I want for my scene. All right. So what I can do here is I can go in to object mode, select this guy, and as I go to edit, delete by type in history, I can now, uh, the box disappears, I can now take this curve, delete it without deleting this guy, right? And now it's just a static object, so if, even if I hit play, nothing happens, right? And I can use it on my scene. Now you could say, yeah, you can do this with the bend deformer. Well, you can, you can do it with the lattice, with the bend deformer, but if you've got a more complex shape, then this is a very easy and convenient way to do it, right? So yeah, hopefully that's helpful for you guys. If you've got any questions, let me know as always, and um, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell thing so you don't miss out on future videos, right? Well, thank you so much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.